Okay, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll demonstrate how to quickly create a new ePlan parts database from scratch. In this demonstration, I'll be using a Microsoft Access file type, but everything that I do also applies to SQL. ePlan ships with the sample access parts database that supports the demo project that they also include. A few years ago, this was for a project called the Car Wash Demo, and more recently, it was changed to support the new Grinder Demo project. Now, these demo projects are fine for training, conducting demos, and for reference, but you may decide that you would like to work with a clean, empty parts database, one that you know where all the data came from, and one that you know contains parts that you've actually used on projects. You may also just want to create a customer-specific database. There are many reasons to want to do this. So today, I will demonstrate that process. Okay, first let's take a moment to review the process that we'll take today. First, we won't need any projects. This is uh, the same process regardless of whether you create IEC or NFPA designs. We want to first review and save our current uh, user settings. We don't want to change anything uh, without knowing exactly what we're doing. All right. Uh, well, you may have a connection to a production uh, parts database, and we want to save that uh, before we make uh, any new changes. We then want to create a new scheme for our parts database that will allow us to switch between the demo database, this new database, and any other production databases that we have quickly and easily. We want to then create the new database, and then we want to save our changes. Lastly, we'll review our database. Okay, the first thing we want to do is re review our current user settings. In the user settings, we can uh, review what parts database we're currently, we currently have selected as our primary database. So if I go into, if I click on the golden wrench and then go into my user settings, I'll drill down into management, and in here we'll have the parts uh, tab. <clears throat> if I select that, I should see the standard default user settings. Now, carefully review the uh, path that I have here and see that if it reflects or matches yours. You may have uh, used ePlan in a production setting or to do something else with that now has your default map somewhere else, all right? If so, um, you want to save that. We want to create a scheme. I'll show you how to do that in a moment such that you can return to that setting, all right? First, take a moment to figure out what that is and write that down. And then in a moment, you can save uh, the scheme with a name. All right, right now, uh, I want to check to see where this is going. The ESS part 001.mdb, that is the current uh, uh, supplied parts database for the grinder project. So, but I want to verify that it's coming from the correct folder. I have several versions of my system master data on my machine for different reasons. And I want to first verify that it's coming from the correct place. So when I say default up here, we want to be using the master data that's on our C drive. That's the default installation folder. Uh, later on, when you begin using uh, ePlan in production, you're welcome to make a copy of that system master data folder structure and place it on a Windows file server uh, to share with the team. Uh, but for right now, I want to map this to uh, my default to this uh, parts database. So I'll click on the three dots, the ellipses here, and bring up the dialog. And I want to click on my look in to verify where this is on my machine. And it should be in my C user public ePlan data uh, hierarchy, right? And I can see from here that it is. It's also in a subfolder called MLD, which is my uh, which is my company code subfolder. All right, so that's exactly where I want it to be. I like that. I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to uh, save my default scheme, 
And now I'm going to create a, uh, a new scheme. The new scheme will hold the demo database that I'm about to create, all right? And for those users that have a, uh, a known parts database that you want to save, figure out what you want to call it, we're about to uh, do that, all right? So I'm going to hover my mouse over the copy. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to create a new name scheme. I'm going to call that demo parts. All right. And then say, okay. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the new button. So I want to create a new database. And uh, when I do that, it's going to ask me, what do I want to call it? And it's also asking me in, in part, where do I want to put it? I don't want to leave it in, in this case, in my company folder. I want to create a new folder for the demo project while at the same time demonstrating how to relocate a database. Uh, so I'm going to move up uh, one level in my Windows Explorer and I'm going to create a new folder. All right. And I'm going to name that new folder demo. And I now have the demo folder created. I'm going to drill back down into it by double clicking. And now down here, I'm going to name the new uh, database demo parts. Uh, and I'll give it a version of zero, zero. That will come in handy later on. Um, and I will uh, select open. By selecting open, it will active it will create that database. Uh, we can see down here the database type that we're about to create and the absolute path for that database. Everything looks good. I'm gonna select open to create the database. I'll give it a second here and I should see the pathway here update. All right, so first thing I wanna do is move up to my save button and select save. And I might uh, go ahead and just rename this demo parts scheme. All right. And save again. So now once we've created this new scheme, I can now quickly click on the scheme button and then uh, go back to select my default scheme. And when I do that, I'm now connected back to my grinder demo project default install parts database. It's that easy. All right. So uh, let's now take a moment. That's how you create a, a new parts database. Now there's nothing in the database, but ePlan did go ahead and create all the tables with all the column headings that we need for a uh, to, to create a real uh, parts database. All right. Uh, if you just went into access or something and created a new table, it would never work. All right. So uh, I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to go up to my parts manager icon to quickly access the parts manager. If you're not using this, uh, please reconsider why you're digging through a menu. Uh, this is one of the most commonly used tools in ePlan. So uh, you should probably be you should probably consider using a quick access tool. So I'll click on this icon and it will launch my parts database. Oh, let me go back and double check that I have the correct parts database loaded. Uh, and I don't have the default. I'll go back to my demo parts and select it, say okay. And now when I open the parts manager, I should see essentially nothing. Now here on the list view tab, which is a tab I like to use the most, uh, there, it doesn't show anything. I see emptiness. All right. But if I navigate over to the tree tab and click on that down here in the lower left, I can now see a tree navigator here on the left side, which to me, as someone who's, uh, played around with these quite a few times indicates that the, uh, the database creation was successful and that the column headings were properly named. Otherwise, this wouldn't show up at near. Well, that concludes this video. I hope this was informative and helpful for you. Subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified whenever a new video is posted. 
If you're looking for help with your next ePlan project, please contact us here at multilinedesigns.com, your independent ePlan specialists.